What's up, everybody, and Happy New Year! Welcome to a brand new season of the Channel Chasers Podcast. This is the start of Season 3. Of course, I am your host, Jay, and joining me as always are my two buddies, Brian and Tony. How you doing tonight, guys? Happy New Year! Happy New Year, gentlemen. <laughs> Happy New Year. Man, my my fan my aunts went crazy with those fucking noisemakers uh when the ball dropped because uh, both were well one was drunk as hell, the other was her usual level of drunk. It was it was a it was a fun time regardless. Hope you guys had a fun and safe new year as well, the folks at home. Um you know. Welcome to the year of the dragon. And uh yeah. So this first episode of the season is gonna be a little different. We're not covering a specific tv show or movie we're actually going to be doing uh our equivalent of a clip show it's like a uh it's a year-end wrap-up where we get to talk about all the different tv shows and movies that we loved as well as you know music books other stuff like that it's essentially like a screen time special if you really want to think about it like that so we have a bunch of different categories we have music tv slash movies and then we have just kind of uh, upcoming, coming attractions kind of thing. Uh, what are we looking forward to? And to help us out with that, Brian has the, curated a special uh, trailer list of coming attractions. So, you know, we'll be doing that towards the end. But of course, we can't start off a Channel Chaser episode without first jumping right into the news with Brian. <laughs> Well, with this new season, things are changing, and so one of those is that we're going to go a little bit more strict on the news, only cover one per episode. That'll also kind of help me with uh, the quickies, uh, which will come back soon with this new season. Typically, we don't like to do older stories, but since it's been a while since we've seen you, this is a story that hits close to us, because despite our... False with some of their current stuff. We are Marvel fans. Yep. So we got to cover that uh, Jonathan Majors has been fired from Marvel. Yeah. And so just as a clarification point, and because I, I don't want people to, you know, receive misinformation. A lot of people think he was found guilty on the domestic violence charges, right? Which is not the case. He was found guilty of batter uh, of assault and battery but if you look at the details of the case the assault was pushing her into an uber that he was trying to get her in because she was chasing after him and then the battery was snatching away snatching away his phone from his at the time girlfriend just want to put that uh, out there he is not a um, domestic abuser i don't know you know obviously the full details of their relationship there could be other stuff going on there but I do not believe personally that Jonathan Majors is a domestic abuser. But the legal stuff is not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the entertainment side, which is the fact that if there is going to be a king, it's no longer going to be him. Yeah. Uh, they're they're going to either have to recast or they could do uh, something funny. And, and oh, it's not really haha funny, but like have the uh like council of kang show up because they will probably already have all those animated right because like you know all all the all the extra kangs were just like you know green screen uh jonathan majors majors is mm -hmm. major eye y you could have doom show up wipe out the council of kangs and then do since you're gonna set up for secret wars anyway uh, one of the key points of Secret Wars is Doom trying to take the powers of the Beyonder. So, wipes out Kang, and then goes for the Beyonder next. Makes perfect sense. It does, but also, this is not the first time that a Marvel character has been recasted. Yeah. And just, they said nothing about it. Yeah, but, you know, most of the most of the time when they've been recasted, they've been the Warriors 3. So, and nobody really cares about Thor characters, well, unfortunately. Rhodey? Oh, yeah. Well... <laughs> They, they 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 actually did do something about that in universe which is uh, yeah secret invasion nope nope no nope. but anyway so 
we'll keep our eye out for that. We got a while until Kang Dynasty or whatever they change it to. We'll have to wait and see. You know, I would, I would, I would love it if like the Fantastic Four movie is them defeating Kang. That way, we they can hmm. have a reason for Kang to not be there. Because I mean, Kang is a Fantastic Four villain. There is also talks that uh, Kang will be in uh, Deadpool. That could be interesting. But uh, yeah, uh, you know. That's the news. Prayers go out to Jonathan Majors. I'm sure you're going to bounce back soon, buddy. You're way too talented of an, way too talented of a, uh, way too talented of an actor to be kept down. So, you know, good luck to you. And uh, yeah, so now we're going to move into the discussion proper. So the first category we're going to go to is music. There has been a lot of great music this year. Oh, yeah. Which is why, you know, I, I definitely wanted to add it to, like, the list of stuff we're gonna, we were going to cover. So, Brian, we'll start with you, then we'll go to me, and we'll end off with Tony. Like Jay said, some of this stuff is stuff that we've already mentioned. So, uh, two albums that I've already mentioned, but uh, they still made my uh, top five of the year. Uh, one is probably the obvious one. One more time by Blink One Eight Two. Oh yeah, I I did actually listen to it. It's great. It is. It was a, it was uh, a really the... good return to form, but it, it it it's weird. It was like it went from like punk, pop punk to dad rock. But like literally dad rock. Yeah. Not like a, yeah yeah. That's what I mean. Like that's a, what I mean by dad rock. I should have clarified. Yeah yeah. Nickelback and all that. Yeah. The namesake of the album One More Time is great. It talks about them getting together. It, it addresses the drama. It, it, uh, and it also talks about, like, you know, just friends drifting apart because of life. Yeah. Not anything, like, yep. serious. And also, uh, the rare appearance of, uh, Travis's voice. Yeah. Because they all, they, nice. yeah, they all, they all sang on that track. Which uh, is pretty cool. Then another track that I liked is, uh, Dance With Me, which was just, like, a classic Blink-182 song. It was a, veil, a, na- na- a vague analogy to uh, sex. Like, yep. You could really just tell that it was about sex. I was going to say, is it, a va- and, is it a vague analogy when, you know, even a child yeah. could... When a child could tell what that's about? I I think I meant the term veil. Like, you know... Oh, it's oh, very oh. Thin. Thinly veiled analogy? Yeah. Yeah, thinly veiled. That's what I was thinking of. I couldn't think of the right word. It's okay. But, uh, Words are literally my job now. It's got a classic Blink-182, very catchy chorus about sex. Cool thing is, is uh, both Mark and Adam are leads in the song, which was an issue back in the day. Mm-hmm. And then also uh, one other song is uh, Bad News, which had classic Blink-182 instrumentals, but talked about a more adult subject like yeah falling out of love mm-hmm. and then the other album that i talked about already is uh diving lessons by addison ray it's just good sad boy singer songwriter type stuff some of the tracks i've mentioned this before i miss your dog yeah the, <laughs> the the part about a breakup that they don't really talk about yeah, I was I was and, I was really sad the first time my brother and his girlfriend broke up because I was like, wait, that means I don't can see Remy? Oh man. <laughs> then Slime, which is uh, an unusual one for him because uh, it's more electronic pop, but he still pulls it off, and it's about just feeling like slime, which we've all been there. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, there goes my camera. Don't worry about it. Continue. Don't mind me, folks. And then the big song of the album, Pessimistic. It just talks about uh, having a bad mindset but trying to get over it. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be pessimistic. I just need a little help. That's that's me 100% of the time. Yeah. Then um, I'd be surprised if you've never heard of this. Because this sounds like it's up your alley if you haven't. Uh, Think Later by Tate McRae. Nah, I never heard. I've never even heard of this person. Uh, ha- very um uh, reminiscent of uh, Ariana. 
Oh, really? But a little bit more focused on the dance and less on the like Mariah Carey power vocals. Oh, I was gonna say, um, because she literally has a song called uh, "Greedy," mm -hmm. which uh, very reminiscent of Ariana's. Oh, is, 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 is it smut pop? Please be horny. She is kind of yeah. Okay. But also, her stuff in general is kind of. But also, she got her start on uh, So You Think You Can Dance. Ah. So a, lot of her, so a lot of her stuff is like dance forward. Gotcha. Dance beat forward. Greedy is about, like, don't get greedy in a relationship. Because mm -hmm. the whole entire album is like the ups and downs of being in Hollywood. Getting a little too uh, personal. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. Like her song "Exes," which is a dance song. Wait, is that the kiss like... is that the kisses to my exes around me? Yes. Oh shit! I have heard her. It's TikTok. Yeah, 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 yeah. I use the filter that used that song on TikTok. Oh, that's yeah. a good song. That is a really good song. It's very yeah, catchy. She, she also. It's a catchy song, but. It's also like she admits her her bads in the relationships, yeah. but uh, doesn't like dwell on it. Understandable. And then the last song is one that is like a sad song, but still has like a bit of that dancey beat to it. Mm -hmm. One line in particular that I love from the chorus is, uh, "You can only dig a grave so deep before you take me with you." Oh, nice. And it's about realizing that you're in a relationship that's over. Yeah, been there. Yeah. yeah. And so that one's good. I would be surprised if you if you knew this uh, next one. It's called uh, it's called Baku's Revenge. Nope. It's uh, by a band called Magnolia Park. Mm. Oh, I think you've uh, mentioned they, that band before. You said they're kind of like uh they're kind of like baby metal a little bit. No, that's not them. Oh, uh, okay. Never mind. This is the one that is modern pop punk. Like, oh, they're okay. Doing stuff. Gotcha. Like Blink and all that. Mm -hmm. But also the one thing of note about them is uh sorry if I get this wrong, but I believe all of them, if not all but one, are uh people of color, which is something that you don't usually see in pop punk cool especially the lead singer is black and unfortunately that does matter of course because, it does uh, also with the fact that they got their start on tiktok yeah so tiktok is how a lot of uh, modern artists blow these days Crazy. but also you know how tiktok comment sections can get especially to people of color yeah yeah so some of their album is dedicated to that Mm -hmm. because you know pop punk is about saying fuck you in song oh yeah 100 percent. and so they have a song called uh don't be racist which part of the course is they tell me i should stay in my own lane what you doing here this ain't your race you were born a different color you should be like all the others so fuck you and the things you say screw this i'm gonna make it my way be mad because i do it better <laughs> Damn. Yeah, definitely that, like, fuck you, pop punk energy, but to, like, a more serious topic. Mm -hmm. They also don't just focus on that. They have a song called Addison Ray, which, uh, I don't know if you know who Addison Ray is. No, but you did just mention Addison Ray, uh, it, like, two albums ago. Did I? Yeah. You did? The, you said the, the Splendid with Sad Boy music. Yeah, Addison Ray, right? Unless I, unless no. me and both me and Tony heard wrong, or I said wrong because they're both named Addison, and my brain got them mixed up. <laughs> oh no! Oh, Brian. Di Diving lessons is Addison Grace. Oh, okay. Yeah, you said Addison Ray. My brain. Uh, it's two Addisons that are both popular on TikTok. So, but Addison Ray is. More of like one of those like dancey TikTokers. Mm -hmm. She's more like your stereotypical popular girl type. 
mm-hmm. looking person. So this song is talking about how uh, the lead singer is falling for a girl that looks like Addison Ray that is totally not his type, but he still likes it. Oh. He, he still likes her. Yeah, been there. And then the last song from the album that I just want to mention is called Misfits. They did with another artist called Taylor Akron. It's about a toxic relationship. And the fact that it's a guy and a girl singing, they can both like talk about each other's flaws. And it's like one of their hardest songs that they do because he screams at one point, like Screamo screams. Oh. And uh, there were parts of the song that also reminded me of old school Linkin Park. Oh, cool. Now, this last album, this might surprise you, Jay. Because it is a rap album. Okay. It is uh, Nostalgia by uh, Rod Wave. Oh, Rod Wave is dope. He's more of a, like the melodic rap type. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He came out with an album this year. and uh, Yeah, it was pretty good. And it was more hopeful than his usual stuff. Yeah, most of, uh, the, most of his shit is kind of depressing. And this album, he specifically said before making it, he tweeted out, done with the sad boy shit. Yep. You know what? Buddy. Yeah, and this one is good because uh, Boys Don't Cry, which is basically a song about like him going through depression and stuff, doesn't really have a chorus, which is pretty cool and different. Then Call Your Friends, you know, about like homies and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the last song that I want to mention is Crazy. He kind of uh, twists Ain't It Fun by Paramore. Oh, it's an interpolation. Yeah, like, he, he sings, like, the first couple uh, lines of the chorus, uh, but then turns mm-hmm. it into his own song. Yep, that's an interpolation. It's basically got the same uh, message, but, uh, yeah, I I like rap, but I have very particular tastes when it comes to rap. I mean, I do like the classics, like, uh, Nicki and her album was great almost made my list i she's on but my not, list and with that let's transition to the next person all right so since brian already mentioned it i'll go ahead and talk about it uh the album one of the albums that like i was anticipating but also scared for was pink friday 2. now <laughs> the reason i was scared for pink friday 2 is because in my opinion as a nikki fan pink friday 1 is a classic and also like mm-hmm. nikki is one of those artists that i have been following since the beginning of her career when she really first started back in the myspace days like 2007 2008 Damn. Uh, i even have uh like the smack uh, the smack dvd of uh where she first appeared like i think it was either in a cypher or a battle but yeah re she's one of my favorites uh just period uh definitely she is the queen of female rap and she has Mm -hmm. essentially created an entire generation of you know young girls who are you know who are basically just doing what she did but you know not as well uh mm-hmm. and uh so i was very cautiously optimistic about pink friday too but i was not disappointed when i finally listened to it i mean a lot of people who just listen to nikki for from her sing- singles and stuff they see her as like you know pop rap and uh, she you know does all the singing and stuff which is which is there but like people forget mm-hmm. nikki can bar your ass to death and mm-hmm. there is there's some good there's some good shit up here like pink friday 2 manages to to do something that i didn't think was possible it's a very long album but it doesn't really feel like it because it's like different sections and the different sections are for like the different types of nikki fans you've got your like rapidy rap you've got your uh pop singy love song type shit you've got the introspective type shit and you just have the the super fun records for example probably my favorite like rapidy rap record is uh red ruby to sleaze and it has one of the hardest lines i've heard all year it actually flips the uh beat from that one nina sky song the uh oh uh, oh if you want me to stay you know that one but uh the line the line is 
uh, Dorito bitches mad because they not chose. I was like, wait, I had to, I had to, I was like, hold on, hold on. Dorito bitches mad because they not chose. Oh, shit. That's, oh, that's great. Uh, Dorito bitches mad because they not chose. I was like, oh, fuck, that's good. Also, one of my favorite songs of that entire album is, uh, everybody with her and Lil Uzi Vert and uh, actually funny enough she talked about it and this was originally supposed to be a song that was part of the uh her like Call of Duty campaign because you know Nikki is a skin in the new uh, Modern Warfare 2 mm -hmm. and so she, she made it to promote it but then she ended up just putting this on the album it samples the Cyndi Lauper song everybody and it it's it's so good because it's uh, interspersed with a little bit of that you know everybody. But she's like you know we're gonna spin a kill everybody. Spin it all, send a whole bag on my body. Like <laughs> oh my I, god, it's so I good. I heard that song. It's so good. It is. I love that song. The uh, Barbie Girl song with uh, Ice Spice great mm -hmm. has a lot of the big radio tracks that's on there uh she has a really good song with j cole where like she basically is talking about her relationship and like how it's kind of falling apart so it's, it's really really it's, it's a really yeah. really good album treat it's, the studio booth like a therapy yeah i mean that's how she's always done and that's been like the best that that's some of her best shit she has a song with she has a song with wayne she has a song with drake where uh like drake gets on his afro beat shit and you know that was fun there's a really good song about uh it's called enough that has both keisha cole and monica in it Ooh, and damn. it's and uh cool. basically the chorus is i i love me enough for all y'all so it's like you know you you don't have you don't have to love me because i love me uh i love me enough for all y'all <laughs> Really good message, really good song. Uh, that's on the deluxe huh. edition, Pink Friday 2 Gag City. Definitely get the deluxe, it's good. And uh, Gag City is not a sexual innuendo, actually. It's it's literally, uh, she talked about it and it's like, it's, this is her having fun, just doing gags, silly songs and shit. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's Nikki's album. I thought it was fucking great. Another album that I thought was absolutely fantastic and is probably my album of the year uh, was SZA's album SOS, which is <laughs> like a it's an R and B almost pop punk rap equivalent of a Taylor Swift album because like it's all talking about the different like just kind of fucked up parts of a relationship like uh, you know. Uh, Kill Bill is, you know, the chorus is, I might kill my ex. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. My favorite songs off of that album are uh, F to F to F and Snooze because I've definitely been there with uh, F to F and the, the chorus of F to F is like, in your calls, I hate me enough for the two of us. I hate that I keep loving you enough. Why? I fuck them because I miss you. That's why I fuck them because I miss you. That's my shit. I love that song. And then Snooze is a song that I have on repeat just all the time. Uh, it's uh, I'm sure like if you're a SZA fan, you've heard it. But it's the, you know, I can't lose when I'm with you. How can I snooze in this the moment? You just too important. Nobody, nobody like you do. That's my shit. That's like one of my absolute favorite songs. Uh, another album that uh, that made my list. Speaking of Taylor Swift, uh, is uh, Taylor's version 1989. One of my favorite Taylor albums in general. It's fucking great. I, I didn't feel like I could include it because Taylor's version, but. Yeah, no, I, I agree. That's my it's my favorite of the Taylor's version so far, so I, I threw it in there. Alright. There's that. I talked about Nikki's album, talked about talked about Scissor, talked about Taylor Swift. The other album I wanna bring attention to is uh Emails I Can't Send, which is a Sabrina Carpenter's uh debut album. Oh well, yeah. Which came out the uh you know in twenty twenty three. Uh it has the song Nonsense where she kind of dives into a little bit of smut mm -hmm. pop. She mm -hmm. she also 
there's a song called uh, Like the Boy, which talks about all the drama between uh, Josh What's-His-Face and uh, Olivia Rodrigo and all that shit. We'll get to Olivia Rodrigo in a second. It's a really, really good album. You can tell she's like very much in her singer-songwriter bag, which it makes a lot of sense why uh, you know, Taylor has her opening up for uh, for her on the Essence Tour that that's really dope she's come a long way since disney and uh, her music is fantastic yeah. she also put out a christmas album as well i'm just gonna that's honorable mention there uh i think it's just called a nonsense mm. christmas or no the album is called fruitcake and she made a christmas remix of nonsense which is great so nice. the last um, album oh yeah go ahead brian my bad i was just gonna say real quick speaking of uh honorable mentions and uh former disney people doing smut pop just a quick shout out to uh, Dove Cameron. Oh yeah, As, uh, I would have included it, but it's only in EP, and they've admitted that it's only the first half of her album. Mm -hmm. uh, but she came out with Alchemical, which is great. It's got like stuff like a uh, boyfriend. Oh nice. I could be a better boyfriend than him. So you all the shit that he never did. But uh, yeah, the final album. Spe and speaking of former Disney stars, is Olivia Rodrigo's guts. Uh, which I, I honestly think is even better than her debut, and I thought her debut album was great because, like, it's a it's very much an evolution of her as a person because, like, mm -hmm. her original album uh, that she came out with, I don't remember the title of the original album, but like the the debut album, but it, it's very much like wide eyed, very much like a girl in love, girl falling out of love kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then this feels more mature, but also immature at the same time. You could tell it was written by a uh, like a girl going to college because like mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff it, it feels uh, like a lot more maturely handled. And she actually worked on a lot of the production of this album, which I thought was dope because she's actually going to school for production and audio engineering, which is pretty mm -hmm. fucking awesome. Good for her. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. my favorite songs on the album are the songs everybody's heard. Vampire is really good. And Bad Idea, I've lived through that. So that's my, <laughs> that, that's my shit. It's just like, you know, seeing you tonight, it's a bad idea, right? Seeing you tonight, it's a bad idea, right? Seeing you tonight, it's a bad idea, right? Seeing you tonight. <sighs> Fuck it, it's fine. Oh, man. That's my shit. I love that song. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Olivia yeah. Rodrigo just continues to improve. Part of me is always going to rock with her because she's half Filipino. But like, she's just fantastic. Good for her. That yeah. is a fantastic album. Uh, I do want to give a Indeed. quick honorable mention. Shout out to Jojo. Because, uh, like, this album technically came out in 2020, but, like, I rediscovered it, because I did have it, but I rediscovered it after watching a video about, like, kind of the, uh, uh, of JoJo's career and, like, all the shit she went through. So I re-listened to her album, Good Enough. It's, it's re- or, good to know, good to know. It's really good. If you know JoJo from the early 2000s, she is a phenomenal singer. This girl, like has been working in the music industry since she was fucking 12 years old and she's been mm -hmm. on talent competition since she was six i'm sure i'm sure yeah. you guys are familiar with jojo she she has hit songs like uh leave you know leave right now mm -hmm. and there's, there's the other one what's the it's other the end of you and me. yeah what's the other uh, too the, late yep oh yeah oh yeah and her other big one is too little too late yep so jojo jo yeah so jojo is fantastic I, I just wanted to throw a shout out to her as well so yeah that's pretty much it for me so tony what uh, music do you want to spotlight uh for this section well most of it is just re-listening to a lot of stuff that has inspired me for my own personal projects, a lot of nerdcore uh, YouTube music, especially a lot of uh, rap ciphers, excellent anime rap ciphers as well. Like one, not like Joshua, has a whole five fantasy rap. Oh yeah, yeah, Th yeah. That one was really cool because uh, his family actually got involved. Like his wife did yours verse, and his daughter did uh, Anya's verse. Oh yeah, it was excellent. 
And then uh, one that you actually introduced me to, which I think was like uh, maybe a year or so old. Oh, yeah. Uh, this past year for 2023 <laughs> is that uh, cipher. Oh yeah, that fate I, that fate cipher was great, and Iron Mouth was a solid blow. I was like, oh, that's perfect. That's excellent. perfect. And uh, just a lot of great uh, YouTube covers from uh, Jonathan Young, uh, Kale Hayes, but an artist from Japan really impressed me the most. I always have a problem with pronouncing her stage name. Otto. Though. Otto. Her songs show blew my fucking mind. Yeah, it, it's it's so funny because like I I had discovered Otto a year prior because uh, she is the Japanese voice of Uta from a uh, One Piece film Red, and ever since then I've been following her shit. Uh, fantastic music. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, the most fascinating thing that I much like with some other artists that we've mentioned, mm -hmm. young, twenty one. Oh yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It was just one of the things that surprised me because uh, I saw a lot of uh, vocalists reacting to this song in particular. Mm -hmm. And some metal singers were like, holy shit, she has actual talent. Oh, yeah. And she's, she, she's fucking gifted. Absolutely wonderful. I listen to that song a lot of the time. Also... With every year comes anime openings that just kind of catch my eye. Mm. One that's the biggest uh, draw for me, especially for this year, is the opening to My Happy Marriage. Yep. Such a gorgeous. Also, the opening to The Family Circumstances of the Irregular Witch is a fucking bop. Uh, nice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely wonderful. It has some of this uh, disco-y feel. Something you could dance to. It's funky fresh. I love it. Nice. So is that it for you, Tony? <laughs> pretty much it okay cool so the next category we're gonna jump to is uh you know the bread and butter of this podcast tv shows and movies we're gonna start with tv shows um so i'll i'll kick us off um uh-huh before we do though did you want to maybe do the section that uh we had mentioned before what the, the coming uh, attractions the stuff that uh we had to not cover oh right I know what you I know what you're talking about now. My bad. Okay, so uh, just uh, just to fill in, uh, you guys, uh, you know, if you've been following the podcast and you you know you've heard uh, you've heard us mention this a bunch of times, we have a huge backlog of episodes because like our our schedule got really thrown off. Uh, so there are episodes that you know you guys unfortunately just won't get to see unless we make a Patreon and like put those up as Patreon exclusive episodes or something. Uh, but uh, we covered stuff like uh, Loki season two, which was phenomenal. We Futurama. Yeah, Futurama, which was a great return to form. Totally Killer, which is a great slasher, sci-fi slasher film. Mm -hmm. Too horny too soon. Mm -hmm. um, well, that was a beautiful and yeah yep excellent adaptation of poe tales oh yeah Absolutely. follow the house of usher was amazing flanagan went out on a bang for netflix it's definitely in my top five yep oh most definitely but also with that it is the only as of right now the only episode of the podcast where jay didn't start with the intro i did yeah, t yeah. Tony, and, Tony opened up with uh with a po poem. Yeah, and it also broke another thing because it was the first time in our podcast history that, believe it or not, I gave a ten out of ten. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think we all did actually. That was like a unanimous ten out yeah. of ten. It was a unanimous. Also, I have the list now. Mm -hmm. We also covered uh, Scott Pilgrim takes off fantastic loved it i think it improved yeah. the movie and the uh, uh comic In indeed good burger too which was a lot better than i was expecting i got some genuine laughs mm -hmm. of course the nostalgia was there but it dealt with a lot of actually like real adult like adult problem stuff indeed uh the family switch which was like a sleeper hit for us. We thought this was just going to be a cute, cheesy little Christmas comedy. But we were like, 
<laughs> yeah, why are we all invested? It was an adorable little Christmas movie still, but yeah, we were so invested in it. We wanted to make sure that this family actually made out of this okay, you know? Yep. And and also, yeah. like, uh, man, Jennifer, people forget how funny Jennifer Gardner can be. Oh, she is. Oh, funny. yeah. Like, Indeed. That, and, uh, that fart joke was fucking hilarious. The last one is one that I have a feeling might make an appearance later on. Blue Beetle. Oh, yeah. Blue Beetle. 100% fantastic uh oh wait did we we oh we didn't mention gen v uh or did we are did we actually upload the gen v episode oh no we didn't okay so yeah but it was it wasn't on your list that you made so i forgot oh I'm my sure. bad i i forgot gen v which i shouldn't have because gen v was awesome uh like and, uh, what a solid spinoff we're gonna try to push for tony to catch up on the boys so we can cover Season four. Yep. And then season two of Gen V. Yep. That's gonna... they're all connected now. Yep. That's going to be awesome. Uh, all right. So, yeah, that's basically all all the uh, lost episodes kind of quick summarized. Um, you know, our general scores, pretty much all of these were like in the eight to ten range. Mm -hmm. I gave Blue Beetle a ten. I gave Fall of the House of Usher a ten. Everything else was like an eight to eight point five. Yeah, it's it's pretty, pretty much. it's pretty easy to like. We don't have to really go through and like score them individually because like we're pretty sure about the yeah. general ballpark. But yeah, yeah, now we can jump into uh, movies and TV top for this year. So I'm gonna start with TV shows. Uh, the first one I gotta mention is fucking Sandman. Mm. <sighs> That came out the year before. Oh, it came out the year before. Oh, well, that was, then I was off by a year. Then I'll talk. Then I'll talk about Bloodhounds. Then because the, the, that was the next one on my list. Uh, mm -hmm. We've did a full episode, so I don't need to go into detail about Bloodhounds. Mm -hmm. But that show was fucking awesome. I love boxing. I love crime dramas. You mash those two together. I'm here for it. I'm fucking here for it. Another one on on my list is a show that we covered for the podcast as well, Exo Kitty. It's very cute. Nice. Very messy. I'm here for all this BS. Oh my god, it was mm. so. Uh, but yeah. So Exo Kitty's up there for me. Other show I want to bring up again, just stuff we covered on the podcast, and this episode is actually up. Uh, My Happy Marriage. One of my favorite oh, anime yeah. of the year, just in general. Fucking shoujo at its finest. And then, lastly, I want to mention uh, live action One Piece. Now, personally for me, I didn't like it as much as uh, Brian and Tony did, but I also recognize that that's the point, right? Live action One Piece isn't made for me. It's made for people who don't want to read a thousand plus chapters or watch a thousand plus episodes to finally get into the wonderful world of One Piece. So, you know, I really appreciate it. It broke the live action anime curse and I can't wait to see what they do next. Uh, in terms of movies, Blue Beetle, uh, as we mentioned before, that fucking made my list for well, like, you know, movies of the year. 100% Oppenheimer phenomenal film very well directed well acted with a phenomenal stellar cast like what a good movie mm, oh yeah Guardians 3 Guardians 3 what a perfect way to end the trilogy and this gives me a lot of hope for the gun verse moving forward mm -hmm. um do 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 Oh yeah, I, sw I switched some stuff around. Uh, I actually uh, threw in Justice League War World because I watched it a third time and I'm like, this movie's fucking great. This movie's fucking great. Not gonna argue. I didn't put it on mine. I'm not gonna argue. Yep. Because it's great. I can see it. Hmm. Right. Right. Th th this th this one has a question mark by it because I like I was flipping in between. Hmm. Which one do I go with? do i go with hmm this is hard this is hard hey phrasing fuck it i'll go with it i watched this 
on uh, on Christmas Eve and it reignited my passion for a franchise that I fell in love with when I was a teenager. Love the books and uh, this movie was fantastic. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, a Hunger Games movie, nice. was amazing. It built out the world more. It gave origin to, profe uh, to President Snow that didn't make him sympathetic. I understand how some people get the read of him being more sympathetic in the movie, but I definitely didn't get that personally. And it opened up kind of my mind to a, a, a like a headcanon slash theory that I have about uh, the fate of Lucy Gray. And I'm excited. Like, honestly, I was so hyped and enthused about it. I ended up getting all three Hunger Games audiobooks. I do have them on my shelf over here. And I bought the book for uh, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, but it's currently not in stock on Amazon right now. So I got to wait. But yeah, that's a phenomenal movie. Rachel Zegler, man, she she's three for three for me. She was great in West Side Story, which, you know, was 2020. Uh, she was fantastic in Shazam, uh, Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods, and I really, really liked her in A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Rachel Zegler's great. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna support her, uh, like, from now on for sure. But yeah, that's my movies and TV list. Uh, we'll jump to Tony. You can start with TV shows and then go to movies. Definitely a lot of the shows we covered on the podcast really made an impression on me. Bloodhounds, definitely, because... You and I ate that shit up, Jay. Oh, My yeah. God. Oh, yeah. We all did. Well, I'm just saying more on, like, the true crime side of things, Brian, because that was kind of a bit of a niche thing, even though it wasn't really... We did a podcast episode, but I don't think it was posted. Yeah, it was a uh, yeah, the lost episode from uh, Love and Death. Oh, yeah, we, I didn't even mention Love and Death. Uh, well, we mentioned that it was a lost yeah. episode before, but yeah, Love and Death was great. That was excellent. <laughs> Uh, that was also this year. Damn. Mm -hmm. uh, Fall of the House of Usher. Definitely uh, yeah, excellent show. And then since I uh, started watching anime, of course, having at least one anime added to the uh, podcast, My Happy Marriage, an excellent, excellent love story. <laughs> Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, a lot of seasonal anime for me, but the standout, at least personally, on my end is the family circumstances of the irregular witch a just delightful just slice of life comedy oh and if we're gonna if we're gonna quickly mention standout anime of the year uh i gotta give a quick shout out to the actual finale for real this time of attack on titan i liked yeah. it <laughs> i liked it way better than the manga and isayama has confirmed that this is the true ending so yeah. There's that. Also, big shout out to Free Ren. Oh my God, uh, sad elf. I was I was excited for this because I've been reading the manga for years, but the anime, oh man, it's so good. It is simply delightful. And it is definitely a show when it finishes sometime this year, right, Jay? Yeah, yeah, sometime this year, because it's a two core, I believe, and it, uh, each core is 13. Four, yeah, four, 14 per core. There you go. Mm. That's what it is. Interesting. Potential show that you may or may not cover on the podcast. Hundred no, 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 may or may not. We're covering it. We're covering it <laughs> because well, I, I was being coy for the sake of mystique. Eh. But oh, yeah. no. the only okay. mystique, the only mystique we care about here is uh, is the mutant. Yeah, true. Jay doesn't really do coy. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, be, I don't believe in dancing around bullshit. I could never dance, so why should I do it in speech? <laughs> There's a bit of fluidity to it. Speaking of fluidity, just seamlessly moving on over. I think some of the movies that I've seen, mostly podcast related, they're definitely in my top tiers. Blue Beetle is definitely up there for me. Mm -hmm. But I have to mention this because. It made me happy, and it's the standout show for the entirety of 2023, bar none. And maybe a bias, mm. I don't care. Pokemon Concierge made me happy. Fuck you, deal with it. Oh yeah, no, it's it's phenomenal. If you're a Pokemon fan, you would seriously need to watch Concierge. Mm -hmm. We are planning to do an episode on it, so you know we're not going to talk about it too much. We might be talking about that sooner than you think. Yep. So, but anyway, 
Yeah, concierge, concierge is great. Oh, is uh, is Shazam up there for you, Tony? Because that actually did come out in 2023. Yeah, it, it's up there actually. It was an enjoyable film, not as great as the first film, but it it is what it is. When did Quantum Mania came out? Quantum Mania was 2023 as well. Well, it's not this year anymore, Brian. Mm. <laughs> it's last year. Oh yeah. Well, this year that we're talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed Quantum Mania more so than a lot of people do. Jay. You felt very much the same when we covered it. Oh yeah, on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really liked it too. Yeah, just compared to everything else. And all, uh, and also like it, it, it just it. The ending, man. The ending mm-hmm. is 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 what fucked it up for me. We we all saw that uh, it wasn't as bad as. A lot of the critics made it out to be sick for Blue Beetle. It was a lot better. Yeah, than I don't. What the I don't fucking know what any of those guys were on. It's just okay. Just okay, my brown ass. Oh man. Okay. Wild. Fucking crazy. Wild uh, but my top movie of 2023, at least to me, is going to be Totally Killer. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Totally Not ki- gonna blame mm-hmm. you for that. Mm-hmm film of my favorite genre doing just funny shit just tell oh, me yeah. tr- and, and tell like us and like surprising twist as well uh also uh i'm sure it'll be on brian's list so i'm not gonna mention it but uh that ended up being a ballad of song of virgin snakes it had a question mark beside it because i was like you gotta choose between these two and i uh i think it's on brian's list for sure so we'll see mm. if not i'll bring it up later and, and that that's pretty much it for me everything is just Pure, pure delight. Yeah, I think pure. I think taking the taking the only cover shows that we like route on the podcast has uh has really helped. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to deal um, with. Um, <laughs> if I'm gonna be honest with you, mm-hmm. with the uh, movies, I only have two on my list that we didn't cover. Okay. Mm-hmm. One of which I did cover on a screen time, mm-hmm. which I still is up there for me. Is uh, no one will save you. That was the Hulu original horror movie where no dialogue is said in the whole movie. Oh, wow. Bold choice. Like I mentioned before in the screen time, it's about this woman who uh, lives in a small town and she's on the outs for some, with the locals, for some reason. Mm-hmm. You don't know. And, and then when weird things start happening to her, she can't really go for them for help. And so she has to try to figure it out on her. Ah. And it gets deep. I'll just say that. Despite the fact that no dialogue is said. I mean, that, that's weird. just the that's just the credit to acting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of this rests on uh Caitlin Dever. She was the one in Booksmart that wasn't funny girl. Oh she also starred in that uh I believe it was also a Hulu thing, uh Rosalina. Oh uh oh, Rosalind? Rosalind. Oh yeah, Rosalyn was good. Didn't make my it, list. It's that but it actress. Was... Oh okay, yeah. So I do know her. I just didn't know her name. Yeah, it stars her, and she does great. Oh, a uh, real quick note about Rosalyn. Uh, I I briefly mentioned it on screen time, but I like barely talked about it. It's a really fun movie because it's it's essentially Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, but with Romeo and Juliet mm-hmm. because Rosalyn is pissed because her boyfriend instantly found a new girl after they went on a break and so she is trying her best to get Romeo back and uh like all of her like you know interfering leads to the events of Romeo and Juliet like oh. You know, she she's the one who causes the misunderstanding because she thought, okay, if if she thinks she's dead, then she'll just go away. Ah, uh, man. Oh wow. Yep. Yeah. Poor Rosalind. But. Uh. But yeah. The second movie is actually one that I just saw on a. I believe it was New Year's Day. It's called The Holdovers. Yep. We it's reacted about... to the trailer on the podcast. If you uh, if you folks at home remember. It's about like the school. It's a private school, a boys only school, and uh, what happens when uh, it's Christmas break, holiday break, and uh, the people that don't ha- have plans or don't have a home to go to. And uh, not just students, also a couple faculty, 
Um, yep. The Paul, two big yeah, Paul faculty, Giamatti is the lead, right? Paul Giamatti and the other faculty is the head of the cafeteria, played by uh, Divine Joy Randolph. She played the part of Whoopi's character in the Broadway version of Ghost. Oh, cool. I did not know cool. Ghost was turned into and, a musical. Uh, yeah, she got nominated for a Tony for it. Cool. Uh, she was on the first season of This Is Us as Tanya. Oh! She's great. Um, Modern audiences, if you watch only Murders in the Building, she's Detective Williams. Oh, but, duh! Uh, See, I knew I saw her. I knew it was This Is Us. I wasn't crazy after all. I knew that was the other show I'd saw, seen her in. She was also in regrettably the idol but i won't put that against her yeah look but i don't i don't put it against lily rose either she tried her best and she carried that show on her back in this one she does a great job because she's not in the trailer really mm -hmm. but her role is that uh part of the reason why she doesn't have any plans is because her son who was a former student of the school mm -hmm. went off to vietnam and got oh and didn't survive oh and so she's dealing with that wait you said when i was gonna like, say does it take place in the 70s or like 80s uh i think late 70s early 80s they oh, don't okay. really ever say okay because the film itself feels like that like it kind of has the same vibe of movies around that time yeah just yeah like how yeah. It's filmed. yeah like a john hughes type movie yeah i could i could t i could tell yeah. that by the trailer yeah for sure the main kid of the group is uh played by a newcomer like this is his first thing dominic sessa he is amazing uh visually he kind of reminds me if uh jeremy allen smith i believe that's his name the guy from the bear ah if him and adam brody had a kid Interesting. Overall, really good acting tour de for, for force, especially those three. There's a lot of stuff that is not in the trailer. That's why I'm being a little nondescript, because experience it for yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we didn't do a watch along with the homies, because it is like a slower paced movie. Uh... I'd highly suggest it. It is in my top five. Uh, but others that we've already talked about, Blue Beetle, obviously. Don't know what the fuck credits were saying. We didn't mention it, but uh, Across the Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. That, got, that got kicked out of our list for other stuff, but I, I, I love that movie. I do. I just, you know, have gripes yeah, as a massive... Yeah, as much. Yeah, I just have big gripes as a Spider-Man fan. I totally get it. I totally get it. But uh, the last one is my movie of the year. Might be the one that Jay's talking about. It might not be. But for me, the best movie of the year was Nimona. There it is. Yep. That was the one. That was the one. That I like I was flipping back and forth. I was like, Song Songbirds and Snakes, Nimona. I was like, this feels like recency bias. I was like, no, it doesn't, because you actually really like this movie. Shut up. <laughs> so I like I literally like opened up a separate tab and flipped a coin. And so yeah. Nimona is great, fantastic yes, animated film, uh, gets really deep, mm -hmm. and, like, it goes places, uh, we, none of us expected it to go, uh, no. the world is super interesting, it's this, like, w weird, medieval, futuristic fusion, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, it's, ju it's just great, man, it's just fucking it, fantastic. It has possibly one of the best performances that i've seen from a youtuber turned actor yep mm -hmm. eugene from the game eugene. grumps killed it as a as uh try guys oh oh yeah why do i i always confuse try guys and the green grumps because they're both youtube groups uh but yeah eugene eugene was phenomenal as the boyfriend i don't remember his character's yeah. name i don't remember it either i remember val yep but I... val was great too so Chloe Grace Moretz knocks it out of the park again. I mean, yeah, it's Chloe Grace uh, Moretz. You can expect that. So that was my number one film. But moving it along, going a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. For for TV, obviously in my top five are Fall of the House of Usher. Mm -hmm. Great, great show. Love it. Yep. 
and then Bloodhounds. Yeah, I would definitely put that in my top five. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then I had this conversation myself, Jay, about Regency bias. Uh huh. But then it is actually that good. But also, I'm glad that we didn't do a top five because I'm not sure where I would put this because yeah, it's not really a show. It's a collection of specials. Oh yeah, but yeah. I got, I got to put Doctor Who because Russell T Davies knocked it out of the park. Bring Doctor Who back. Doctor Who is like my favorite show of all time. But yet, towards the end of Jody's run, I was really not feeling it. I fell off. I fell really off in the fell middle. Off. I fell off in the middle. Yeah, I did too. And then I went back and watched it just for completion's sake. And her last special was better than I thought it was going to be. But still, no. These these are far above. I mean, three fourths of them star Doctor Donna. So and you got NPH. Mm-hmm. Who the who's going to uh, say no to NPH? Also. This is on Disney Plus, so they got a lot of money, like yep. extra money. Yep, yep. So the ef- the effects are great, the action scenes are great. Um, I forgot to mention this, but uh, you know who is uh in the first episode? Who? I forgot her name now. The botany teacher from uh Harry Potter. Oh fuck! Uh, fuck Professor Sprout. Yeah, Professor Sprout, her actress. She's in the the first special. Nice. Uh, cool. As a surprise role. Then also they answered the whole Doctor Donna Donna Noble thing, and gave good resolution to those characters. Good. Um, that was the fir- first one. Second one was just a a classic Russell T Davies uh bottle episode, but with a Disney Plus budget. Nice. And then the third one was the final resolution of all those characters in that universe. If we never see them again, it's good resolution. A lot better than it was before, I'll say that. And uh, helps set up the new stuff, which leads into the Christmas special, which I I really liked. The Doctor and... Uh, the new companion, I'll just say that, um, do really well. They have good chemistry. I've mentioned this before, that the new companion, personality-wise, she kind of reminds me of Rose mixed with Bill. Mm-hmm. But her personality with the Doctor is actually something we, I don't think we've ever seen before. Oh, yeah? And that's, they have sibling energy. Oh, nice! Mm. Okay. Which was really cool and different. And... I'd love to see how that's explored in the future. And then lastly, I won't go into too much detail because I did mention it in screen time probably a couple times, but uh, Poker Face with uh, no, no, Natasha no. Leone. Ma, 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 ma. It's a great little murder mystery show that is reminiscent of uh, Columbo and stuff like that. Uh, has a lot of great guest stars from Ron Perlman to... Adam Brody, Stephanie Hsu, the list goes on and on. Great stuff. Um, can't wait for season two. And after thinking about it, if we manage to cover Futurama and how they operated things, then I think there is a chance that we could cover Poker Face if given the time and uh, okay. depending on how they run season two. Cool. But uh, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Mm. But I love it. It's in my top five. More people should talk about it. Go watch it. And that's it for my TV shows and movies. Oh, speak, speaking of which, uh, Tony and I both forgot something that we really fucking loved this year. It didn't come out this year, but we watched it this year, so I want to mention it. 1884. Holy shit. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh. That show was amazing. Fuck you, what Taylor you Sheridan. Man. Why, why do you hurt my spirit? Man. My spirit. It was so good. We got so invested. And then the ending, it was just like, oh, damn it, you. Also, speaking about him, though, just shout out because 
Uh, we never finished it, but what we did see of it was great. Uh, Bass Reeves. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we you know we will be covering that in the future. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, yep. Yep. I... All right. So now it is time for the coming attractions. All right. All right. So, so Brian, finally, yeah. So, time for trailer time. Yep. That yeah. That's the coming attractions. Uh, so, Brian, ah, voice crack there. So, Brian, tell the folks at home what uh, trailers you have prepared for us uh, to get us excited for movies for 2024, movies and TV shows. This collection here is a little bit of like underrated stuff that could potentially become shows for us. Mm-hmm. It's not any of like big name stuff at least all but one because one has big names in it but i don't see people talking oh, about it. also real quick because uh you know this technically started in 2023 but i couldn't count it on my tv show list because it's not over yet and it's going to finish in 2024 the percy jackson show is phenomenal holy shit yes. it's yep. great yep. but anyway as far as the trailers go new season so new rule since we only did doing one new story we're gonna do six trailers Mm -hmm. and uh this time it's three 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 movies three tv shows nice nice the first movie i'll keep a little ambiguous because i want you to experience it like i did but it it is a uh netflix original like action comedy Mm -hmm. starring kevin hart Mm -hmm. also in the cast is two marvel actors I okay. Have an idea. Uh, this is, I might have Renslayer to... and Vincent D'Onofrio. Huh? Yep. I I yep. have an idea of what this is. <laughs> yeah. And then next up, everybody's gonna know what this is. The original has a special place in I think all of our hearts. We had to react to it. The fr- uh, the official trailer for the Mean Girls remake. Yep. Uh, I I I actually I actually saw it when I uh went uh when we went to see Wonka. Well, I hadn't seen it. Mhm. Um, so we can you can watch it again. Yeah. And uh then uh I don't know if you saw a trailer for Wonka cuz I think it's got the same uh audience. New movie nobody saw coming called If. I don't think I it's saw the trailer. It's a movie about about a dude, dude, and a little girl who can see imaginary friends. Yeah, we talked. Yeah, we talked about this, and it's like a fo- it's like a foster's home type thing. It's a twenty four. Yeah. Also, Ryan Reynolds. I was. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Ryan Reynolds is starring in it, and uh, you'll never guess who the director is. Sean Levy. John Krasinski. Oh shit! Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Yep, and uh, he apparently plays a role in the human cast, along with SNL alum, Bobby Moynihan, and then uh, the young Sylvie oh. from Loki. Mm. She's the girl. Nice. Cool. And a whole list of famous people voicing imaginary creatures. To name a few, Steve Carell, Phoebe Walter-Bridges, Miss Krasinski... Matt Damon, John Stewart, not the Green Lantern. Don't uh, calm no. down, folks. The com- the political comedian. <laughs> yep. Talk show host. But yeah, so that's going to be interesting. I had to include that. Mhm. Then a uh, new upcoming network show called Trackers. It is a new network show, but it's starring uh Justin Hartley. Oh, cool. And uh Playing his mom is the sister from Usher. Oh! 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 Okay. Uh, the, the, uh, why? Why am I forgetting her? Madeline. There it is. I was like, Yeah, Madeline. Why am I... Adult Madeline's. Yeah. Modern time Madeline, actually. Yep. 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 Coulter Shaw travels the country in his old school RV to help police and private citizens solve crimes and locate missing persons until. His latest case changes everything. Oh. And then an Amazon Prime show called Expats. Oh, cool. Where it's a bunch of 
expatriates living together in Hong Kong. Oh. And then drama strikes. Uh, Naturally. One of which is being played, one of the lead characters is being played by Nicole Kidman. Hmm. Okay. Cool. And then the last one is an Apple TV show called Criminal Record. It is a cop show, but not a procedural. Basically, a seasoned vet and a star rookie must team up together to solve a murder when they both get a mysterious call from a stranger. Is that, does, that call, does that call tell them that uh, they know that they know what they did last summer? Mm. <laughs> hopefully not. And hopefully doesn't tell them seven days. Or uh, uh, movie. yeah, but uh, the thing is, the new rookie is a is an up and coming actress who's making a lot of waves. Really good stage actress is transitioning to uh, recorded stuff. She was the Lady Macbeth to David Tennant's Macbeth. Oh shit! Cool. And speaking of Doctor Who, the seasoned vet. Uh huh. It's Peter Capaldi. I was going to say, Peter Capaldi seems like he's perfect for a grizzled old cop. Yes. Oh, I'm watching I'm watching that. Hell yeah, I'm watching Those that. Those are our six trailers. I'm go- I'm I am so them. glad I bought Apple TV Plus now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So well, yeah. we'll be back in a second. Uh, thanks to the magic of editing. And uh, we'll see you guys in a bit. But for now... Hear a quick word from our non-existent sponsors. And we're back. So, uh, Brighton kicked off the new year with a bang. Fire trailers all around. I want to see all of this. It's crazy how good it is. But real quick, before we uh, get into talking about the trailers, uh, we forgot to mention a couple shows that definitely deserve to be mentioned. Kaleidoscope, for one. Brian and I uh, covered it very early in season two of the podcast. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito, fucking phenomenal. I yeah. love I love the fact that it's like a it was a choose your own adventure kind of thing almost mm-hmm. because you get the you get a randomized order. And uh, like I loved comparing notes with brian like how his order affected what he thought about the story and how my mm-hmm. order affected you know mine it's a really Which, cool concept at first we thought hey it's not gonna affect much apparently it did yeah be- yeah because you go back and you watch yep or listen to because like i because um, i had completely missed the whole thing of like the, the 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 uh the twist at the end with the sun i was like oh now i only caught it because the relevant episode they played right before. Yep. And and that episode happened so early for me that I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It was good. It was really good. But yeah, Brian also has one that he'd like to mention as well. Go ahead, Brian. Just a real quick uh, School Spirits. I mentioned it on screen time before. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's a good ghost mystery. Has a lot of good pathos in it. Stars the younger blonde Peyton list mm-hmm. and it's great season two ain't gonna be for a while but i really want to watch it like i want it now yep but uh i'll still wait it's great go check it out all right so Maybe yeah we'll do a thing on season two for sure if we can yeah, watch it yeah. in time. yeah i was gonna say if we can watch it in time and if there's like room in the schedule but speaking of the schedule we've essentially <laughs> made a good chunk of our january schedule thanks to these trailers oh um, yeah holy shit uh i want to talk about expats first because fuck man <laughs> damn like you know, we were just like, oh, yeah, you know, Nicole Kidman show. Nicole's been, Nicole's been on, a, on a roll with these TV shows lately. You know, Big Little Lies and all that shit. And it's just like, all right. Should have guessed. It, 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 starts, it starts off real nice. They're, they're living in Hong Kong. They got a family. Things are going great. And then the inciting incident happens. I'm not going to spoil it in case you haven't watched the trailer yet. Brian is going to link that playlist down below go watch the trailer but shit happens mm-hmm. and then shit gets deep 
real fast. And I'm just like, oh shit, this is going to be a feels puncher. I'm here yep. for all of this. Look, if you guys and have been listening to the podcast for long enough, you know that I live for shows and movies that can make me cry. Like, I can feel yep. it. And also, uh, interestingly enough, besides Nicole Kidman, it's filled with a bunch of, like, underrated actors. Oh, yeah. Like, her husband. He was the uh, live-action Shredder when... Yeah. They actually made Shredder. Yeah, easy. yeah, yeah. The action. Yeah, when they changed Shredder from a white dude to actual Oroko Saki. He was also, I believe, the villain in Tokyo Drift. Yep, he was the villain in Tokyo Drift. And the best friend, Sorry You Blue. You just see her face, and she's a familiar face. Yep. She's been in a lot of shit. Don't even need to go off on another tangent about that. Yeah. But like. Oh, she was also. Uh, I didn't realize this until I just saw it mm -hmm. last second. She's a stepmom on to all the boys and uh Exo oh! Kitty. Mm. Yo, I love her. She was great. Oh she's she's Nicole's best friend. Nice. Okay, cool. Um But yeah, but yeah that, I I'm looking for We should have guessed. <laughs> yeah. We should have guessed because that's like Nicole's bread and butter right now is a show that has a very innocuous plot, and then boom, boom seals bomb. Yep. Uh, where uh, and and is this like this is uh, Paramount, Amazon, Amazon. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. You know, uh, Lyft looks like it's going to be fucking hilarious. I love a good heist movie. Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. You know, I may not like his stand-up as much as I used to, but he has not really missed for me in terms of his movies. I've been, yeah. I've and really I'm, enjoyed his movies. And I'm glad to see Vincent D'Onofrio doing something funny again. Yeah. Because he's good with comedy, just, he's been, like, really typecasted as a big villain book dude. I think it's, uh... He does it so well. Like, I think... You know, uh, he, he gets typecasted in, like, the hard edge characters, not only from his time as Kingpin, but, uh, like, you know, his, like, long stint on Criminal Intent, because he was a very intense cop. Mm hmm But you also got to remember that one of the first big things that he ever did was Edgar on Men in Black. Oh, yeah! That's right! Fuck! Um, but, yeah, so... Looking forward to that. That one's on the schedule. This one I knew off bat was going to be on schedule because we all have such a deep attachment to this fucking movie. But, and I was nervous about it because, like, I watched a stage recording of the musical and I thought it sucked. Not that it sucked, I thought it was just okay. But, like, this, this looks fun. I'm here for this. this. Is this is also going to be another awkward, probably theater going. I think it's only in theaters. Not, no, not really. They're, dude, millennials, millennials love this movie. I'm not, yeah. I, don't, I don't think I'm, gonna, I don't think I'm going to feel awkward walking into Mean Girls as awkward as I did feeling to walking into anybody but you. I, I feel you, and yeah. But anyway, I'm excited for that. Weird thing is, the trailer. You have to look hard to know that it's a musical. Yeah, it just feels like a Mean Girls remake at first. We were questioning it for a while, and then it's like, oh, there are the musical numbers. There we go. They're dancing in the background. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, looking forward to that. If looks yes. like a really fun concept. I'm really, mm -hmm. I'm really down to watch it. Uh, that 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 marshmallow guy, nightmare fuel. Oh my god. I. Wonder, uh... He was, like, slowly decaying. Yeah, he... It just... Dis yeah. It was disturbing. It concerned me quite a bit. It... It, uh -oh. it did. Uh, honest to God. Terrified me a and little bit. That one chick who looks like she's from, uh... Drawn Together? Yep. Oh, no. Oh, man. Tell me she didn't look like she came from Drawn she Together. Did. She did. She did. I'm with you. But, yeah, uh... Also, John Krasinski pulling out all the names. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can do that when you're fucking John Krasinski. And when you're literally fucking John Krasinski. 
That's Cause... also that's also true. I mean, his he, wife he's, he's, he's gonna put Emily in everything, and like, it's not like his wife is a bad actress. <laughs> I mean, have you no. seen the Devil Wears Prada? That was her first movie. Helen, mm -hmm. you know that? Uh, just a quick fun fact for you. Uh, Variety just did a thing of like I think it's like actors the interviewing actors. Anniversary. Yeah, yeah, I saw it where Anne and Anne and uh, fucking uh, Emily sat down and like talked about mm -hmm. it yeah she even talked about how like uh you know she was such a huge fan of anne hathaway princess diaries and all that and was like actually super welcoming and like helped her out a lot mm -hmm. it was it, yeah no it's, it's so sweet oh it is awesome yeah, and, and they're it, it, it's apparently just, still friends today. Yeah, it's just, it's so funny that they're so, like, close in real life, and they play such good, bitchy rivals. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Because just, like, some of the stuff, like, Emily Blunt's like, how the hell did I say that to you? It's like, do you remember that line? Of course I do. They bring it up all the, people bring it up all the time. People still come up to me and say... <laughs> and and ask me how to spell Gabbana. <laughs> uh. But anyway, if seems like it could go either way, honestly. Yeah, so I think it's one of those ones we're gonna have to play by ear. We're gonna have to see it, and then if if it was if it's good enough, we'll we'll definitely bring it to the podcast. Mm -hmm. Also, it's coming out in January, which is already kind of stacked as is. Yep. It seems for yeah. real. Based on our other stuff, like. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, uh, what was it? Oh fuck. Uh, criminal record. Criminal record. Yeah. Criminal record. Yep. Uh, I am here for this. Peter Capaldi was born to play a grizzled old fucking cop slash detective. Mm -hmm. Super hyped. And I did not realize that it's not two cops working together. It's, they're like working against each other. Yep. So it's kind of like it's a little Killing Eve ish. I'm I'm here here for it. Um, and then like lastly, the one that we probably won't... Sorry. Go ahead, Tony. I'm just saying I like the mess. Oh, yeah. Indeed. And lastly, the one that we probably won't cover, maybe on screen time? Who knows? Tracker? Yeah. I I'm I know I'm going to watch this on my own time, so I might cover it on screen time. But uh, we'll see. Like, it depends on, like, how connective the story is, because it definitely feels like a case of the week procedural. It does, and uh, the only reason why I gave it cred on the list was because of Justin and uh, the actress playing his mom. Yep, and I love and I love Justin Hartley. I've I've loved him since Smallville mm -hmm. when he was Ollie. I think he was the perfect Ollie, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like if they had him on Arrow, my God, oh yeah, it would have been so much better. No offense, Stephen, because you did great, but you weren't funny. Wasn't he also? In the failed Aquaman pilot? He was. He did also. He was in the failed Aquaman pilot. He just can't catch a break with DC. Which is weird. Because I, in Smallville, Aquaman was played by a different actor. Yeah. I, I always thought uh, that was funny. Alan Richardson, who uh, is making a name for himself right now as Reacher. But yeah. So, definitely going to check that out in my own time. A bunch of banger trailers, Brian. Holy shit. We, we, we basically planned plotted out the entire month of January now. Thanks. Uh, and, uh, who knew the trait, the movie that finally got the Channel Chasers to go back to the theater would be Mean Girls. I mean, <laughs> would you not have expected that? Do you know how often <laughs> we quote Mean Girls, Brian? <laughs> but, speaking about going to the theater for movies, Yep. So transition into oh yeah, uh, more yeah. upcoming yeah stuff. yeah coming attractions. Like, what are we looking forward to? I I don't really I, have, I don't really have much of a I don't really have a big list because I, I have a list because I honestly don't know much of what's coming out. So yeah, go ahead and read yours. And uh, first of all, um, is the obvious one for me, the hmm. new season of Doctor Who. Oh yeah. Uh, that's up there for me as well. Also, back to movies. Another uh, theater movie, which I have a feeling we might cover, is uh, the next MCU movie. 
Well, yeah, if it's an MCU movie, of course we're going to cover it. But what is it? Deadpool 3. Oh, duh! Duh. Which, by the way, this is like a little bit of a twofer an anticipated thing. Mm -hmm. Because not only is Deadpool the next MCU movie coming to theaters, it is the only MCU movie coming to theaters in 2024. Nice. Mm -hmm. Finally. Uh... We are getting five shows, but but four of them are animated. Yeah, and Mar Mar and Marvel animated has actually started making a like a comeback. It's it's so weird, you know. DC used to slaughter Marvel in terms of mm -hmm. like animated content, and not to say DC slacking because like yo, their animated movies still hitting. Oh, uh, and uh, that is the one. We... That is the one on my list. Crisis. Yeah, Crisis Part One. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I have. Meanwhile, uh, Marvel for animated stuff. They've got possibly another season of What If. Mm -hmm. Which shit? That should have been on our top five. Yeah. Yep. Holy shit. Um. Uh, uh. Just funny story, real quick. I, I told this yeah. to Brian, but uh, I did a review of What If Season 2 on TikTok, and like, was it 20, 20 30 minutes later, uh, I, I go to check it, because like, it said I got likes, so I was like, alright, let me see what the views are at. And it, I, it says, community guide, uh, taken down due to community guidelines violation, and I was like, okay, what the fuck? What community guidelines violation? And it said, for... <laughs> For show, uh, for set, uh, for showing, uh, and selling, uh, regulated goods. I'm like, what the fuck? I, I was reviewing a TV show, huh? But yeah, see, season two was great. Yeah, they didn't miss. Uh, Not a single time. Better than season one. Um, only thing is, uh, apparently, the head writer for What If is doing the one episode that Tony told us about, and then she's done. Oh, man. Sag. Sag. But, uh... Moving on to other stuff that Marvel has coming out that's animated. They also have, uh... I don't know if I'd put this on my anticipated or not, because it seems iffy right now. Uh, Eyes of Wakanda. Um... X-Men 97. I'm, I'm hyped for X-Men 97. And your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I'm interested in seeing how that works. Formerly known as Spider-Man Freshman Year. Mm -hmm. I think I'm forgetting one. The live action one that we are getting this year is the Agatha Harkness. Oh, yeah. No. Aren't we getting Echo? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, We're I'm also getting yeah, Echo. Yeah, I was going to say, Echo is supposed to be this year. But Echo is this month. Yep. And it's a binge drop, I believe. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, but anyway, moving on from Marvel, I know we're probably not going to get anything concrete. Mm -hmm. Like, as far as, like, seeing anything, but it, I'm excited for at least news for whatever the fuck they're going to do with Power Rangers next. Yeah, same. I, I, I'm, this is, like, literally a brand new era. You know, it's a brand new place with a brand new attitude, mm -hmm. but we still got to fight them all. Be the best rangers we can be yep, but... yeah i hope we at least get news yeah no i'm i am interested for sure um something else that i'm looking forward to is uh the suicide isekai animated movie <laughs> yeah no that looks fun and uh speaking about disney mm -hmm. i mean not disney dc different d yep something interesting okay we are only getting one dc movie for all of 2024. Okay. Which is? Joker 2. Ah. Oh. Isn't that supposed to be like a musical and Gaga is Harley? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. I I'm excited. But also, I'm excited to just take a break. A breather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. from Cause, DC. Cause, well, I, I'm, a, I'm excited to take a break from superhero movies in general. Because I... I'm not going to use the whole superhero fatigue thing, but I feel like the strategy of flood the market was just too much, mm -hmm. even for hardcore mm -hmm. nerds like us. 
I yeah. think they need this year of reset. And it's not like we're not getting anything. Like, uh, in 2024, we're also getting the Penguin TV show. Yep. Oh, also, yeah. also, also, Superman and Lois, or My Adventures with Superman, season two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is true. Ooh, 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 yes. Another thing is a new story that fell to the wayside. So, apparently, you remember the Arkham? Yeah. TV show they were working on? Mm hmm. They have retooled it yet again. Oh, is it back to Gotham Central? No, it's still Arkham, but it's not Matt Reeves verse Arkham. It's the gun verse Arkham. Oh, shit. That's mm. dope. I'm oh, ready. that, that adds. See, now another rumor I heard makes sense. Because a lot of people are speculating now because of this that uh, our pets is just going to be Batman in general. I don't think so because Gunn has gone on record to say that Damien is going to be the Robin in modern time. Yeah. So yeah, he's too young to. He's too young. He's too young. I mean, I guess they could make up. They could old make up him. But anyway. Another thing, movie that I'm looking forward to this year, we did a trailer for it. Oh, the unicorn Mr. one. has never missed. Uh, oh. No. Oh, I thought you were talking about the, the unicorn one with Jenna Ortega and uh, Paul Rudd. We haven't seen a trailer for that yet. Ah. I was talking about Furiosa. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We did see that trailer. And George Miller, George Miller is amazing. So, it's like, I'm here. Mm. I'm here for that. And, uh, Jay, I don't know if you have any albums that you have looking forward to i'm i'm you know i'm i'm just i'm looking for i'm looking forward to uh i know i'm sure ariana's gonna release this year because it's been like two years so new ariana grande album super hyped i'm looking forward to seeing what olivia rodrigo puts out next oh wait ariana yeah she probably isn't oh because because of wicked yeah shit that's one thing to look forward to this year. Yeah, yeah! Ariana yeah, Grande's yeah. Alphaba! Oh. I'm here! Here for it! Yeah, Tony? Yep, here for Wicked. Definitely here. But on, uh, still... Oh, I was a bit delayed, but on the Tokusatsu-related side of things, uh, Bomboomjer will be coming out in March. Yep. I'm, I'm gonna check this one out. Nice. Yep, so, uh, we are not gonna cover it on the podcast but we're mentioning it well, every time yeah time. yep but yeah it is something it's a car themed sentai we don't know who is going to be in the cast quite yet we know what the suits look like we know what the changer looks like we know what the villains are well at least their name mm. and the toko community in general is very mixed on the suits themselves Mm -hmm. the suits are the suits are kind of goofy we've talked about this i mean the tire i yeah i don't i don't i don't like i don't like Mm -hmm. i don't like the i think the tire stuff is a little too excessive but the overall like the helmet is the only thing that throws me off i do like the idea of using the rim Mm -hmm. for the visor. visor yeah i thought that was cool Touch, but I also love the overall suit design, except for parts of the helmet, like the yeah. No, I feel you. Same. Um, also, in the racer, look for the suit. Love it. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Also, I did hear rumors that uh, they might be looking to uh, older, like Taku actors to come back. Also, oh. um, like. You know, cast. to kind of to kind of stay on Japan, uh, mm-hmm. anime that I'm looking forward to. Of course, my Happy Marriage season two, uh, Kaiju number mm-hmm. eight is coming out this year, I believe. Oh, that's cool. Super underrated jump series. I like Kaiju number eight. Nice. Uh, and Chain Soldier is getting an anime. <laughs> Never thought I'd see the day. Never yeah, well, thought. Yeah. It it and uh. <laughs> That that is like madness. Also, I think this month, right? Uh, solo leveling. Is yeah, buddy. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm um, excited. I'm trying to give a bit of a rumor that I heard, at least on the Toku side of things, it mm -hmm. kind of quab Brian. We might be getting uh, old Toku. We might be getting actors, but they're from previous series that might make an appearance in the show. From what? Reason? Oh, okay. All right, that's cool. And uh, the reason why I mentioned albums and all that mm -hmm. is because there is one album that I'm looking forward to. Oh. And uh, don't have to wait too much because it's this month. Oh. But uh, mm -hmm. Saviors by Green Day. Oh Ooh. shit! That's right, Green. Yeah, that's right. Green Day's doing another album. They promoted it and talked about it. Yeah, on yeah, I, New, yeah. I was New gonna Year's say that's what, yeah. That's why they were everywhere on New Year's Rock and Eve. Yeah. Well, they were also everywhere because some people forgot who Green Day is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh man, no, because like I, I, you know, I've told the guys this story, but like. My niece, who is 11 years old, like she was talk, uh, oh. like we were having this conversation, and she was like, "Uncle Jay, guess what? So you remember how you were telling me about like you know bands that like you and mom listened to when I you you were my age?" She's like, "Yeah." Well, I found this really cool old band. They're called Green Day, and I'm like, "Old? What? Well, uh, not just um, not just forgetting it like because of age." But also just like forgetting who they are, like what they stand for. Oh yeah. Because yeah. apparently the other reason why they went so viral on New Year's Rock and Eve because mm -hmm. they changed some of their lyrics for American Idiot for a more modern audience. I mean, oh. it makes sense. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, uh, I enjoyed that. Like one of the more controversial changes was instead of saying I'm not part of a redneck agenda. They said I'm not part of a MAGA agenda. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and but so it's going to be cool to see Green Day back. I'm definitely uh, looking forward to Green Day. Especially in this like political world that we are now. I will just say that I could go a lot further, but we don't get political here. So I'll nope. just leave it at that. But yeah, no, it, like, no, that definitely has me hyped. I would, I'm, I am def, I'm mm. a, I'm a huge Green Day fan. Yeah, and one thing that I'm definitely looking forward to this month for sure on the 11th is the epilogue to the Scarlet and Violet DLC. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. and on the Pokemon front, uh, in February, uh, the new series starring the brand new main characters Rika and Roy are yeah. is uh, is coming to Netflix. Pokemon uh, New Horizons or Horizons. It it's just Pokemon Horizons, Liko and Roy. Yep. Yep. Very excited. Uh, you know, I've I've heard mixed things from uh, from the Pokemon community. From what I've heard about it, this looks like it'd be up my alley as a Pokemon fan. And it's oh, definitely yeah. a good uh, departure from what the uh, Pokemon anime has been for the past 20 or so years. <laughs> Shit, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, we've been through a lot with the Pokemon anime, like uh, the, the whole transition from uh, Veronica Taylor to uh, Ashley. I don't remember the woman's name. The, the 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 voice of Ash that has been the voice of Ash since X and Y, or yep, it it was no Battle Frontier. Uh -huh. It was Battle Frontier onwards. Battle Frontier onwards, I think. And also a lot of other changes. And on top of that, the just the Pokemon anime itself needed a good just reset. I also and hope this encourages them like, to do more stuff like Origins. Well, from what I've seen, they've done amazing stuff with short animation, like with oh yeah, Paldean wins. Uh, the, I, I liked the, the Galar shorts were, as well. Yeah, the Galar shorts were amazing. Um. I, really excited to s well i need to finish probably and wins because uh, i was caught up until third story about the i still uh, need to i still need to watch uh ash's final adventure oh it uh it's an interesting rigmarole of just situational stories 
I still need to finish that too. Is it on Netflix? Um, yeah, it is. Okay, cool. It is. Uh, gents. Yeah. Also, mm-hmm. something that is starting this month, mm-hmm. but and we will likely cover in the future. Uh, Mr. and Miss Smith. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. We covered the trailer in one of the. Uh, yep. Yep. The, the yeah, that's the Donald on Glover the show one. Episodes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also, we forgot we were talking about DC. Coming this year is uh, Batman Cape Crusader. Yeah, on Amazon, right? Prime. Yeah, Amazon. Yeah. De- also, oh. Uh huh. Oh, I now saw what the missing animated show was that I forgot from Marvel. Okay. Marvel Zombies. Oh yeah, that's right. Not, they are doing a Marvel not show. super interested yeah. in it, if I'm being yeah. honest. I'll give it a try. Yeah. Another animated show that I'm looking forward to even more so, and I got a list up now. Mm-hmm. The Tomb Raider anime on Netflix starring uh, Peggy Carter. Yep. Oh yep. yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh. That that looks awesome. Mm-hmm. Man, there's a there's a lot of stuff. Just just know yeah, it, yeah. just know it's a packed so year, guys. Stuff. It's a so very, much. Stuff. It's a very packed year. We are going to have such a fun time on the podcast uh on the podcast now this will be tony's first full season so congratulations tony yeah yeah and uh i feel i would regret it if i didn't mention it one last thing Mm -hmm. it is dc it is animated and it is tied to our show yep Uh hell yeah oh yeah kite fans Oh, I'm so excited Getting for his own show this year. I'm so excited yep. for that. So excited. Yep. Hilarious. Uh, because the villains are the funniest part of Harley Quinn. Uh, so Brian, before we uh send these these good people off for the new year, why don't you tell them what we're covering next? I know we only just got here, but it's time for us to take a little vacation. And uh, we mentioned it before, but next up on the queue is Pokemon Concierge. Yeah, baby. I'm mm-hmm. I'm excited for this. Prepare for mm-hmm. Poke Tangents, folks. Mm-hmm. And also just delightful vibes. Nothing but oh, delightful. Oh yeah. Like you got a you got a small taste of you know, Tony and I's Pokemon fan summit semi unleashed. But kept on a leash. No, this next episode, full blast. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have my Ash Ketchum hat anymore. Yep. So, mm. prepare yourselves. Get your sunglasses. Yeah. Prepare. Get your beach chairs. Get your mimosas. Please drink responsibly. Get your and get this. your floaties, sunscreen. Mm-hmm. Get and be prepared for a nice, comfy time. So. Yep. No. Time. Until don't get until then, though, we'll see you guys later. And once again, happy New Year! We lo- we enjoyed 2023 with y'all, and we look forward to 2024. Peace.